Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of A Comedy Advice Podcast. I'm singing because I'm very excited. My name's Stefan Satani, and I'm very excited. Why? Because I have a very special guest with a pretty long intro that I'm about to read. He's a New York City comedian, actor, writer, podcaster, and delightful human being. He's been seen on Comedy Central, True TV, Barstool Sports, MTV, Amazon, and his albums have seen the tippy, tippy tops of the iTunes and Billboard charts. He also pers- he prefers a cirque to a sleeve. Everybody, please welcome Mike Cannon. Wow, that was unbelievable. I am cropping that and using it for something. <laughs> That's exactly how I've always wanted my career to sound. <laughs> <laughs> I'll send you a clip. I can I can snip off the last part, which sounds oh. kind of ironic given the <laughs> perfect dude. And also, you have like a twelve octave range. That was insane. I did not expect <laughs> your voice to hit such levels. I I did go to college for classical opera, so I did. Uh, you really? Where'd you go? Yeah. No, I'm kidding. Oh, I, I got so I excited. Why. I was like, hell just, yeah, dude. <laughs> I'm trying to impress you. I, I actually, I did go to school for Italian. So that okay. in itself is like very <laughs> I guess range. that's in the wheelhouse. Yeah. You're, you're yeah. in the operatic sphere. That's like one of the prerequisites. You have to take opera to be able to speak Italian correctly because you got to yes. hit that range. So <laughs> that's fair. But yeah. enough about boring old Italian me. I want to talk a little bit about you. First off, Mike. I wanted to ask, we've been in some trying times here. Sure. Uh, how are you doing? Are you doing okay? I'm good. Yeah, you know, there's uh there's waves, there's there's ups, there's downs, there's uh there's manic bouts of depression, there's, you know, violent swings and and darkness and uh, but it's great. I'm great. How are you? <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> I'm so glad you asked. Usually the guests don't ask back, mm-hmm. but I'm I'm about the same. I yeah. deal with some anxiety at some point. So the uncertainty of what's going to happen and then the calmness of um, just, you know, being with my wife and enjoying yes. those little moments with our family, me and my cats. It's, yeah. it's a great time. So that's the silver lining, right? Like every day, you know, I'm so thankful that I like my kid because so many people, <laughs> you know, sometimes they'll look at their kid and it'll just be a daily reminder of all of their shortcomings. And But I look at my kid and I'm like, all is possible. He's the best. He's natural, antidepressant. And it's like, he's he's been the driving force of even being able to get through this damn thing. Oh my gosh. Oh, little bundle of opportunity and potential. And exactly. that's great. Yeah, Optimism. hopefully he'll be, the, he'll be the John Connor we all need. <laughs> that's amazing i was gonna say too my wife i'm so glad that i like my wife i love her yes. but i also like her and get along with her and mm-hmm. it's i've heard a lot of stories of how people are getting divorced and all that and yeah. <laughs> thank god we get along okay i've also uh, started watching a shitload of tv that i usually don't like and mm-hmm. starting to get into now like britain's greatest baking show or bake off or whatever the fuck it's oh called. nice oh so you're yeah. not typically a reality competition guy no, not really. Not really a Bachelor in Paradise guy until now. Oh, now I really... love Bachelor in Paradise, dude. I am super into that show. I don't even watch Bachelor. I just watch that show because it's like the all-stars of who gives a shit. I don't need their context. <laughs> and they just embarrass themselves so freely in front of the camera. And it's so wildly scripted in certain parts that it's so fun to watch like idiots attempt to be authentic <laughs> oh my it's god not even, it's not even acting like they can't act but they also can't be themselves like that is they're almost like a robot getting water poured on them they're just short <laughs> in, in, a, in an attempt to be a human being that is a great analysis of it and i think you're absolutely right it's one of the reasons i like I, I didn't think i would like it but because of everything you just said I can't stop watching it. So yeah, that's all. I know. And I I was watching those. uh, What were the ones that were beginning of quarantine feels like 16 years ago, but uh, what was it? The circle was out. That wasn't a dating show, but that was like kind of a reality positioning social media show. That was, that got kind of interesting, but then that married at first sight. I was super into that, Uh, that too hot to handle, which everybody legitimately seemed like they had a lobotomy right before they got put on on that show because it, they were like staggeringly stupid but beautiful like perfect in every physical measure yeah that one was a real masterpiece i like <laughs> i loved circle because there were some similar very superficial folks there and then there was that one really nerdy kid that yes. was like i'm just gonna be myself mm-hmm. and then he sends these messages and he's like circle send 
and it has a smiley <laughs> face and stuff. And, and yeah. he ended up getting close to winning. I, I really like that guy. Well, him, him and the Goomba kid that had all the makings <laughs> had all the makings of being like a sociopath and that Italian guy that comes in and expresses himself <laughs> angrily that's been on every show. But instead, yeah. he's this fantastic example of Italian. He's like this <laughs> sensitive guy that reaches out, super loyal, very nice to the dork that you were just talking yes. about. Like, he's, he was a great dude. Yeah, he was a really good guy. Definitely deserved, well, spoiler alert, definitely <laughs> deserved the win. But yeah. uh, anyway, I, I also wanted to talk about you because you've been a pretty um, productive poly during quarantine, or at least <laughs> very good timing where you had your special Life Begins that came yeah. out. You had Timing, the, oh, the right, movie, yeah. which was oh, maybe we can just halt and screech right there. That was a fucking great movie, man. You did. Oh, awesome. thanks, dude. I appreciate yeah. it. Thanks so much. I mean, that's one of those things that I, I'm lucky that it came out now because i didn't know if and when it ever would you know we shot it over the yeah. course of i mean more than four years like we were just trying to fit bits and pieces and get certain things in it was like our boyhood but uh <laughs> it uh you know it, it didn't i i wasn't sure how it was gonna piece together if it would and it, i was just glad that uh people you know it, it people seem to like it so that's cool oh man it was so good i when I see indie films, I don't know what to expect exactly, but like yeah. the, the first five minutes, I was hooked in. I thought that the the cameras were great, the acting was great. The fr <laughs> the scene where it shows you in year one, and for people that haven't seen this movie, go see it. it it's on Amazon Prime, and it yeah. goes through. I guess if I was to give a synopsis about you following your ambition of comedy or your character following their ambition of being a, a professional comic right. and kind of falling in love and then trying to balance the two. And yeah. then it shows you like year one, two, three, four. And in year one, there's this kind of empty crowd. And oh, I think it was Chris Crispy. Uh, Chris Crespo. Crespo, sorry, Crespo. Yes. Yeah, wow, yeah. I, I fucked up that name, Chris. Crispy. No, no. It's, I mean, it was pretty close. <laughs> and, his, and his hands are a bit crispy. And that's, the, <laughs> that's that's the joke. Is you gotta see it. But this kid has such a great sense of humor about you know whatever yeah. that is called. But he's hilarious as a comedian. And in that scene, he like you know he really uh, he let himself be showcased. It was pretty great. God, it was it was so good. Yeah, that was hilarious. And there were some also other funny parts. I think most of the cast were comedians. There were you, there was Mike Feeney, who's your co-host yeah. on Irish Goodbye podcast, who was the That's booker. Right. Which, yeah, yeah, uh, <laughs> which it was perfect, perfect for him to play a uh, disingenuous twat. <laughs> 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 and I saw Tim Dillon was in it too. Yeah, it was, Tim, uh... Tim was so good. So this also like, you know, this spanned over, over time, like when I didn't feel as good about myself comedically. So there were, I think we filmed Tim, uh, Tim's part where he's basically telling me to quit comedy and doing it in only the way Tim Dillon knows how to do, which is perfect and concise and cutting <laughs> and makes you question everything about it and even though it was for the movie i like went into a week and a half long tailspin after that where i was like i think i gotta get out <laughs> i think i think that's it. even though that was for the movie it was so spot on to sometimes how i feel i was like maybe I, maybe he's right <laughs> oh my god no he did deliver it really well and then your face when you guys were all having dinner after he had said all that stuff i was yeah. just like damn he's a good actor and now it kind of <laughs> makes sense we're like it hit your core <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sometimes you don't act. You just uh, get sad when people say truth. <laughs> <laughs> so I was going to ask, too, because I heard on another podcast that you had, as it went through you doing stand up on year one, year two, mm -hmm. et cetera, you had kind of drudged up old material that you were working on in your first year of comedy, second yeah. year, et cetera. What was that like going <laughs> back on stage and, and resurfacing that content or the, those bits? I mean, it it was doubly bizarre because 
so not only did it was I so I found like year one real year one notebooks I mean I found divorce poetry that I wrote <laughs> while my parents were splitting up and it just wasn't funny it was like the beginning stages of my comedy and it was mostly just sad like a, a 21 year old boy with no leg to stand on oh, like no. just truly truly embarrassing stuff but uh then the early bits it's like I could kind of now being you know doing it for 12 years I can kind of yeah. see I see what I meant and I could see what I was trying to do. And, yeah. you know, it, it's, uh, it's awful. All of it's so terrible. And, and, uh, but at the same time, it's a little bit affirming that, you know, there's a, a markable change to, you know, to what, how I used to approach things and how I currently do. But I was performing at the place where I also started. So at the village lantern and I hadn't been there in, in a while, you know, it, I, I, I've maybe done maybe two sets there in the last five years or something. So while wow. we were filming that, that was my first time in that room since the real early parts of my, uh, of stand up, And it like Dang. everything felt super like PTSD, almost Charlie was in the bushes. I felt great. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. That's hilarious. And then I was going to ask, cause I think on year four, some of the material, I heard that material in Life Begins. Was that mm. material that was older as well that you found and then you were like, oh, this has legs and I shaped this into something or was I'm it the other sure. way around? I forget what we used because I think, so sometimes what happens and I, I, I like punchlines that I wrote for my first set that were, you know, they were the one thing that was good about it, I actually put in my special. Like, I, if it stacks and makes sense with the topic that I'm currently talking about, I'll kind mm -hmm. of be like, oh, that's right. You know, I, I had this thing and I'll jimmy it in there. That p the bit that I talk about potato gunning the tampon, that was a joke I told, I, I told my girlfriend in, when I was a senior in high school. We were talking about this girl. We were making fun of her friend. That is terrible. But we were making fun of her friend who was a junior that didn't get her period yet. So I was joking that it was so backed up. It was eventually going to potato gun out of her vagina. And I used to do the noise for her. The Like I used to just do that noise for her all the time. And it, it would crush with her. And then I put it in a bit when I was fucking 34 years old. Isn't that crazy? That is crazy. And that yeah, was weird. one of my, I, I wouldn't imagine myself saying one of my favorite jokes on a comedy <laughs> set is a potato gun tampon <laughs> releasing from a vagina. But with the sound effect and everything, I was cracking up. I was just sitting here on my computer watching it and I was oh, cracking thanks, up at that. Yeah. And I mean, all the way. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. No, no. I, I, had, I think I just choked on my own spit. <laughs> oh, it happens to the best of us. Um, I was just going to say, though, the whole thing, the special was amazing. I know that you talked about your new kid and marriage and even going overseas and telling jokes for the troops. Yeah. And also the whole structure and the format of it where I think you and your opener, Brendan Sagalo, walk mm -hmm. in and you kind of give him the story of how you... <laughs> yeah, I got passed you... into the cellar. Yeah. Oh, Which I was is... going to ask... Go ahead. Oh, go ahead. I was just going to ask, is that true? It is, yeah. I mean, you know, obviously I'm being an asshole in the beginning of it. I love when people are like, are like, wow, you stink at acting, dude, that opening. And I'm like, I'm intentionally bloviated. <laughs> I'm intentionally being an ass. And yeah. it, it's, so, it's so funny, but it, whatever. It, the, uh, that <laughs> happened, obviously, but Colin didn't request me. Like, Colin had a heart attack. He had no idea. Right. You know, right. we had met a, a handful of times before then. And it just right. so happened that he suffered a heart attack. I was at the cellar. I was given the opportunity by the manager and I had a really great set. And then the set had to get sent to Esty, the famed booker of the cellar. And mm -hmm. then after that, it still took like a month and a half, two months for me to audition. <laughs> and then I auditioned on a Friday, a five minute set, you know, on a, on a yeah. show following killers and uh, was lucky enough to get passed. Fuck, man. I mean, I know you made fun of it a lot and, and maybe embellished a little bit with obviously <laughs> yeah. Colin not requesting you with a heart attack, <laughs> but I loved how you did it and like poked fun a little bit about yourself and, and had others like you had Robert Kelly, Jim Norton, Rich yeah. Voss, all being interviewed to quote, talk about how great you are. And they're like, what? He fucking stinks. And, <laughs> and just going on like... And those like, guys, I don't know if you're a tough crowd fan, but the, you know, the fact that I could get Keith, you know, Voss, Jim Norton, Bobby Kelly, and Colin Quinn on my, on my special 
to me, that was, that was almost for me. Like I, I, I'm glad people liked it, but the simple fact that I could make that project happen, that's like the fanboy in me that, and that you know, got me into yeah. comedy in the first place. The fact that I could get all of these vicious dudes to do the, you know, to do what they do best, which is be vicious, <laughs> you know, yeah, that, yeah. that was an honor to me. I love, you know, too much of comedy, in my opinion, is like right now is, is cool. There's a lot of cool comedians and uh, it, I don't find myself cool and I don't find comedy all that cool. I think it's, I think as Colin Quinn said, uh, cool is the antithesis of comedy. It, uh, and so I like the whole thing being comedy. I like them trashing me. And so it's a tongue in cheek, you know, documentary about me getting into the cellar. Like everybody has done a cellar project. So yeah, yeah. the fact that I could do that while shitting on me and making fun of the whole process, that's, that's the best. That was really cool. And it was awesome to see that too. I, not growing up, but I, I guess when I was in my teens, I would watch or listen to the Opie and Anthony show and yeah, tough same. crowd and all that stuff. So seeing them all together, trashing somebody i feel like it is such an honor and i would i'm a sensitive boy i would hate to be roasted by just anybody but by them i feel like that would be awesome so oh yeah i I've, I've done one-on-one -on -one roast battles with my friends that hurt my feelings <laughs> i'm like friends with them and i'm friendly with all of those guys but i'm more you know yeah. I, I look up to them also they're legitimately some of my comedy heroes so yeah. that to have them to have me be the focus point i'm such a narcissist that no matter how they're talking about me is such an honor <laughs> so even <laughs> that they're saying i suck i'm just like they're thinking about me <laughs> i was thinking about it the same way so we're on the yeah. same way of like there Good. <laughs> i was gonna i was gonna ask about your comedy too because the comedy throughout the whole thing was just on point laugh after laugh after laugh and I heard you say on, I think it was Joe List Mindful Metal Jacket, that mm -hmm. you like to embody the, the evil or like the asshole person so the crowd doesn't have to, which sure. I think is, is really great because, and, and smart, because sometimes comedians might be like, oh, you know how we all think this or we all <laughs> yeah. do this. And you're just like, you know, I... I'm going to have a baby or I was going to have a baby. And I was thinking, can we have a practice baby to like kill before we get the real one? <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, it, it, but you're right. Right. Like some people might have that thought or at least, you know, yes. entertain that passing evil. And it's our job. I think as a, as you know, this is so hoity toity, but as a comic, it's like, yeah, that's a fleeting thought for a reason. You want to get rid of that if you're a real functioning person that has, you know, actual <laughs> responsibility. I, me, my whole job is to kind of showcase those weird, those weird fleeting thoughts and then be like, you know, you could laugh at the guy experiencing it instead of having to own up for it yourself, you know, and yeah. hopefully you identify with it. If not, at least I'm a cautionary tale. <laughs> yeah i i love that because then the people sometimes if if you they feel like they're being roped in they're like oh wait a second wait a mm -hmm. second i i don't want to feel that way that thought has been fleeting for me and i'm done but if you're like oh they thought it and they're admitting it okay maybe i thought of that before or i'm laughing at that thought it's right i i feel like it's a, a nice pathway to laughter and i also i just want to laud you on the images that you have etched into my mind for <laughs> some of your jokes. I feel like you out of all the comics, I've had a lot of comics on here and I've listened to a lot of comics and I feel like your vocabulary is very on point when you're talking <laughs> about things, oh, whether thanks. it's been on, on podcasts that I've heard you on or um, life begins or whatever. Mm. I feel like you say the right words at the right time. It's, it's maybe not, the most expansive vocabulary. That's not a compliment. That's okay. Sorry. <laughs> no, you're right. But you're right. It's, it's, it's easy. It's, it's not like super not educated. I mean, it is educated, but it's not yeah. like too highfalutin where I'm losing people. I'm not Dennis Millering the audience. Instead, yes. I'm, I'm trying to paint a picture with colorful language and alliteration. I mean, I'm a huge alliteration guy and I think that actually helps slam punchlines really well. So yes. I, I, the way I, you know, and I grew up in kind of a musical family. So it's almost, the way I talk is very image conscious. I'm trying my best to make you see something because in my opinion, me as a person, I'm not that interesting to look at. 
So I have to paint a really good picture with my words so people are seeing beyond me. Yeah, I see. I see. Thank you for helping me finish my own compliment. I appreciate that. Because <laughs> <laughs> I was going off the rails there for a second. But That's hilarious. I, yeah, you just keep green lighting yourself until it's an insult. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I was going to ask, I mean, for the, I, I know you were talking about Cirque versus Sleeve in one of your bits. Mm. And I mean, just Cirque versus Sleeve, that, there's funny in that. And then you're <laughs> talking about how a non-circumcised dick looks like, uh, what was it like? Uh, it's giving birth to itself. Yeah, it's giving birth yeah. to itself or it's had Burton fever dream. That's um, the only, and, so that birth to itself, that was the only line that started that joke. Like, so I, I just said that in conversation with somebody and I wrote it down and then I just started talking about the uncircumcised penises that I've seen in my life. And that became that bit. So that oh. it just, it literally just started with that one stupid image of, of me laughing that like the dickhead of an, of an uncircumcised dick when it comes <laughs> out, it looks like, you know, Jim Carrey and Ace Ventura too coming out of the back <laughs> of the rhino. It's, it's hilarious. It, it, you know, it just makes me laugh. And so many people, I mean, that joke in particular the fanatics for circumcision are like truly scary, frightening people. And I totally understand the argument for it. I'm, you know, I get it to each their own, totally get it. But right. I mean, those people are like legitimately crazy online and very, um, very aggressive. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yes. Like you think yes. I can paint a picture. They paint some real fucking <laughs> trauma, trauma porn shit about your pure baby that they always call it pure baby. He's a pure baby. It's like, stop talking about him like he's Coke. Oh God. Yeah. Like some dull orange juice. Pure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Not from concentrate. Got some baby pulp. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> oh, I just imagined all the clippings in an orange yes. juice. <laughs> oh, beautiful again painting the picture right That's beautiful. um yeah i was gonna say there was one more that was just really spot on oh talking about after you have four beers nowadays your dick looks like a shoestring with the plastic part <laughs> rolling yeah. off the cord. <laughs> yeah that it was like that was another one that was the only line that started that whole chunk Oh my God. It was so specific yet so spot on. It just cracked me up. Image was instantly in my head. And I where, felt where like, are you from? Uh, I'm from here from Phoenix, Arizona. Oh, okay. Okay, cool. Cause yeah. I was, I was curious about that because you know, obviously sneakers are sneakers and everybody has them and they go through their sneaker problems. But for whatever yeah. reason, when I was on the road, initially that joke didn't work as well. Like people were too interested in telling me that it was an aglet and they're like, that's the name of it. And I'm like, yeah, I, I don't care. The whole point is the rhythm of the <laughs> sentence. Cause I say a shoestring with, with a, you know, whatever I say with the plastic thing at the end. And yeah. that's what rolls the sentence. It's like, I can't say a shoestring without an aglet. And for those <laughs> of you who don't know, an aglet is, it's like, you, you don't get it. Like, you know, whatever. But that uh that joke was bombing outside of new york and i almost thought like that practice of trying to slam shoestrings through the hole and then grabbing the one strand and trying to jimmy the whole string through i was like is that a new york thing <laughs> <laughs> it was just so dumb and then eventually i got the wording down and people understood what i was saying but you know it was funny how i somehow you know because my joke didn't work i just assumed it had to be <laughs> the local that's, to New York. That's so funny. And, and it's so interesting how you have to kind of work through that. And then the feedback people give, oh, it's an aglet. It's like, <laughs> yeah. Jesus. People yeah, are really, you. they like, you know, and that's fine. They're responding to the material, so I can't be pissed. But um, yeah. a lot of people are, are very fact checky about jokes right now. They love telling uh, you why, why scientifically or whatever your joke doesn't make sense. And I'm like, no, I know. I, I, please don't come to me for information. Is that new to you? Like, I hope you're not here <laughs> and hoping to learn. I'm, I'm, I'm truly trying to make jokes. Oh my God. That's <laughs> awesome. Well, I, I have to thank you because I had discovered you through YouTube from this Life Begins special. And oh, then nice. I ended up going down rabbit holes. Algorithm, holds baby. Yes. <laughs> and, and then I found you on Instagram and, and saw all the other stuff you're doing. Um, like, <clears throat> was it Frank Rigatone? And, Frank uh, Rigatone. Yeah, that's been, my, that's been my baby for this entire quarantine. Me and uh, 
I just shot, I mean, he's kind of based on some friends of mine, my father-in-law, my father. It's just the guy at the beginning of quarantine that was just begging, you know, that was defying Governor Cuomo and trying to open up his gym. <laughs> you know, it, it just in the, in the middle of March, there were already all those guys that were like that. And it just, to me, it was just, it was a funny and ripe character because, you know, I have, uh, I have some firearms here. So <laughs> it was, it's, a, it's a shootable script. And I just thought it was so goofy that, uh, you know, had to go through with it. That's hilarious. And then you've got your um, the web series pilot for siblings I saw yes. came yeah. out as well with it was you and your actual sister. My older sister, Jessica. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. nice. I have two sisters. My sister, Jessica, is wildly talented voiceover artist. And then my younger sister, uh, Chloe, is a audiobook narrator and she's a musician. Both of them are musicians. They're like insanely gifted, <clears throat> both of them. Oh, wow. That's really cool. I, I yeah. tried to do voice acting. But it just it didn't work out. But what? I ended up, yeah, dude. Cut a cut a reel, dude. There were, I feel I'll hire you. I have nothing to <laughs> offer, but I'll fucking hire you. If if you ever, I'll do it for free for you. If you okay. ever need it, but, I might uh, ask you to do like daily affirmations or something. Something like you're <laughs> worth it. <laughs> you oh, do God. have a good vocabulary. It's not that smart, but it's it gets there. <laughs> <laughs> it's not expansive yeah. it uh, well mike thank you so much for the we're gonna get into the advice part of the podcast cool. but before we get into it i wanted to ask what have you got going on where can people follow you what yeah. would you like cool. to plug let it uh, so uh, social media at i am mike cannon just across the board so whatever you use i'm at i am mike cannon then uh youtube i have my special life begins at uh, it's mike cannon comedy on youtube i have my special life begins i have my first hour that was uh an audio album i have the one shot 1080p uh just straight through hour of that up on my youtube as well so i have both uh, both hours plus clips Plus Frank Rigatone, that series. I have a whole series making fun of Ellen <laughs> in the beginning <laughs> that I did in the beginning of quarantine because I thought it was hilarious that she might be a shape shifting lizard that you know drinks baby's blood out of a chalice. But um, <laughs> and then I, you know, I have siblings. I have all this stuff. You know, pilots from MTV that I did years ago. I have hours and hours of free stuff on my YouTube. So that's mostly what I'm. Uh, what I'm promoting is, is all that stuff. I'm, I'm giving it away. And, and the numbers really mean stuff to hiring production companies. So if you could just take time to subscribe to that, that'd be great. That's awesome. And that'll all be in the show notes. So listeners, awesome. you can just click wherever you want. Show some love to Mike. Yeah. I, Mike oh, and I timing. Feel... And timing. Sorry. T timing on Amazon Prime. And if you don't have, have if you're not in the UK or America. So if you're in Canada uh, or wherever, Ugh. just uh, D, yeah, DM me and I'll get you a copy because for whatever reason, it's just in the UK and US. Oh, nice. Okay. Yeah. Well, not nice, but nice yeah. of you. But I'll get you a copy. Get yeah. Nice. Awesome. Well, cool. Mike, thank you so much. We're going to get into the advice portion oh, yeah. of the podcast. And before we get into the questions, I actually have an inspirational quote to help center us and get us nice. inspired. All right, good. I, I, I already told you, I already told you I'm answering these dead serious. <laughs> oh, fuck. Okay. Well, perfect. Good. Before I was going to ask too, you can be dead serious about this as well. I like to ask my guests if they have any inspirational quotes that they, they flock to when they're having their down days or they need some inspiration. Dude, you know what? I should. I should because I'll, I'll tell you what, one of the most rewarding things about So I played football one year of my life and it was my senior year of high school. I, got, I, I was actually a really good soccer player and was getting looks as a sophomore to play in college. And then my alcoholic math teaching coach inexplicably benched me my junior year. So in an act of rebellion, I played tackle football the next year, which was ridiculous. <laughs> But one of my favorite parts about the summer workout season was two, three a days that we had was the coach in the morning would gather us up. We'd do this, you know, uh, do all this like footwork and, and uh, what is that called? Jump rope. And then he would read us a motivational quote in the morning. And it was like from great athletes, great, you know, all these people that just really knew what they were talking about. And I retained none of it. <laughs> I wish I wish I had one thing to tell you right now, but it meant so much to me at the time. It probably motivated me to do great things physically. And now I have absolutely none of it in my brain to give to you. 
Oh man. First off, I like the struggle for jump rope. I like the rope with the handles at the end of it. <laughs> yeah, the rope the rope that you jump. <laughs> <laughs> and then it it that definitely brought me back to where I, I was never I mean I was definitely a Steven in high school so no football for me I was more of a swimmer <laughs> but I was gonna say I did have a weights class with the football coach and he every time he would sit us down and then he'd read an excerpt from mm. some sort of inspirational athlete or maybe Mother Teresa I don't know if she played football yes. in her high school days but <laughs> something where where we would reflect on it and I retained absolutely nothing. Yeah. You know what? I'll so. give you one. I'll give you one. And this is something that I've been doing lately. And I don't know if it's even recommended, but maybe you can kind of comb through this and see if it's, yeah. if it's good. So Lil Wayne was really uh, famous nice. for a while at saying best rapper alive. It's all he would say about himself anytime anybody answered and they would huh. compare him to other rappers and he'd be like, no disrespect to them. Best rapper alive. No disrespect. I love what they do. They're fantastic. Best rapper alive. So that's what I've been saying to myself lately, especially within comedy. Like I finally feel relatively secure in my abilities and I think I'm, I'm okay. And I, you know, and I'm, I'm seeing and growth and getting to, but now I'm at this point where I'm like, best rapper alive, dude. I don't get all respect to everybody else, but best rapper alive. None, of, <laughs> nothing else phases me. Best rapper alive. That's amazing. Very inspirational. And I hope it's in your Instagram bio as well. <laughs> I actually, <laughs> yo, I, I, I should now that you say it. <laughs> That's amazing. Well, very inspirational. Um, kind of puts my quote to shame. I brought a quote. It's not by a rapper or anyone famous. It's actually by a robot. And oh. the robot's name is Inspirobot. So what, what it does is it uses AI to take some of the wisest words known to man, and then it mashes them together for a beautifully constructed inspirational quote. I'm excited. So I'll read it, and then we can kind of decipher or find out if it means anything. <clears throat> so this week, Inspirebot says, best rapper alive. No, I'm kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. It says... <clears throat> If you are who you really want to be in the surgery, you must put an end to the surgery. Hmm. I kind of get that. I kind of understand. It's like, if you're already who you are, there's no reason to continue deep diving and trying to change your insides because your insides are going to remain the same as long as you are who you are. Holy shit. Okay. Wow. Usually the guests are stumped for at least 10 or 15 seconds, but Mike Cannon pays damn. to smoke weed before a podcast, bro. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, that's pretty amazing. I was thinking more figured, no, more literally, where mm -hmm. if you are a surgeon and you are where you want to be in the surgery, you fix them, you got to put an end to it. You can't just keep having fun if you're, because I know sometimes work can be fun, but yes. you got to move on to the next project. Maybe Mike Cannon, you've got a really cool video that you're going to shoot. You've got this boring ass podcast that you got to do and you <laughs> don't want to get to it, but you're like, you know what? Maybe I could get another follower or two. I'll do okay. it. So it's like you put an end to that, that video surgery and then you join Steven or Stefan, whatever the fuck his name is. And then for like 30 <laughs> minutes, what are you <laughs> reading from my Bible? <laughs> or for my journal i meant journal but i said bible <laughs> my bible says that <laughs> oh god uh, <laughs> best rapper alive yeah it's in best scripture rapper alive. <laughs> <laughs> oh god all right well mike i don't know about you but i feel super inspired right now i'm ready to go baby i'm change i'm ready to change the world but like right. biggie said like biggie said can't change the world until you change yourself Damn. I wish I could take this mic and just drop it on the floor. Yeah, dude. That was fuck. I mean, he said it with like while wheezing heavily. <laughs> he was like, <laughs> can't change the world. And I'm wearing Biggie right now. That's actually pretty cool. <sighs> can't change the world to change ourselves. <laughs> That's, can pretty you do no, no, it's pretty good. Can you do other celebrity impressions? No, no, no. Okay. I mean, only if it's like on the fly sometimes, but mostly they come off like, you know, wildly insensitive towards their culture. <laughs> <laughs> All right, fair. We can, we can go yeah. astray from those. That's great. <laughs> I, I think you, 
just one more one more douse from the compliment shower i feel mm. like you have a very distinct voice well hopefully uh-huh. the compliment shower isn't too hot and it doesn't end up being a, uh... <laughs> yeah it's um, really it's grating <laughs> it's super it's super unique and grating it's so unique in the way that it's aggravating and it's very <laughs> painful in my eardrums. No, but I I feel like you have a unique voice that is like a voice that you will hear. And once you get, once everybody else recognizes that you're the best rapper alive, people might imitate your voice. Oh, that would be nice. <laughs> that'd be, yeah. that'd be funny if I had spawns. I know it, like a tell had spawns and Mitch Hedberg. That, uh, I can't see that happening, but that would be, uh, I mean, a tell, I've, I've watched him two days in a row and started to be like, bah, bah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's, it's, it's impossible not to. He's so good and it's so fun what he does. Yeah, no, it's really cool. I feel like Mike Feeney too, although you know what? No, fuck Mike Feeney. He's not on this <laughs> podcast. He's <laughs> not the best. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but anyway, we'll go into the questions now. This first question, it was found by our fan Trent. Thank you, Trent. It's from Reddit. And it says, how do I ask if someone stole my money nicely? Someone stole about $50 or so from my money jar. And I have asked everyone in my house, but this guy was at my house yesterday and was in my room. So I need to ask him if he could have taken it or knows anything at all. I have no idea how to word it or ask. He's not the only one I'm asking. I don't think this person would steal from me or my family in general. He's been my brother's best friend since elementary. Like he's another brother. Help, please. Uh, well, first of all, that guy stole from you, and you should <laughs> just not. I think at the, it's like that, uh, that Bronx tale lesson. It's like, so you just got him out of your life for 20 bucks. Granted, it cost you 50, but get him out of your life for 50 bucks. Lock the door whenever he's over your house. Don't let him in your fucking room. He stole from you. Nobody else in your house. Trust your family. That kid can beat it. I fuck well yeah that was dead serious and great advice <laughs> fuck dude <laughs> shit yeah I mean he definitely stole who else fucking stole from you like yeah I don't think your family would so well I don't know your family maybe your family well, is a yeah. den of thieves that's true know. but I feel like your no. brother would be like yeah you know I took it fuck you like you know and that's fine if, as long as you know but yeah it's this kid if he was in your room why was he in your room get him out Get him yeah, out. yeah, exactly. Especially if he was your brother's friend. What is he just yeah. doing peeping around in your room? That's a little, it's borderline creepy. The only so. time I ever went into my buddy's brother's rooms was when I was having sex with my girlfriend in a high school party. <laughs> and, and, that was, and that was the only room that was open. And I just, I wasn't going into his parents' room. So I just took it into his Marilyn Manson brother's room with all fucking green light or what was it? Black light paintings, like those 3D faces coming off the wall. <laughs> yes. What a nightmare while you're trying to go down on your 18-year-old girlfriend. Oh, my 18- God. Just, yeah, just trying to close your eyes, pretending it, it doesn't happen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then also, yeah, just banging her on the bed, holding, trying to use your other hand to see if there's any money in any jars. <laughs> yeah, just, yeah. Just really <laughs> reaching around for some cash. <laughs> Fuck. All right. Yeah, exactly. That's just what people do to people's friends, brothers. So right. you just got to accept it. Move you on. Just got fucked, dude. You just got fucked. Dude. Fuck. I feel like that could be a segment on the show. You just got fucked, dude. Mm. Yeah. Sometimes maybe you it's just little... got to take it. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, maybe it's bordering on a little homoerotic, but. <laughs> but it's not, I don't, it, it's not, it's just, uh, I guess maybe a little bit, but it is, it's more about just like, you got fucked over. Like, yeah, you just got fucked. Right. You just got to take it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. But yeah, the more I say, you just got to take it, the more it's like, all right, that's anal sex. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? To make it better, I'll just put it in parentheses. You just got fucked, dude. Not just, anal yeah. sex. <laughs> yeah. Not anal sex. <laughs> just trusting. yeah exactly all right this next question it's found by our fan julia found on the internet says how do you best prepare for serious presentations for those who aren't great at public speaking i don't have the best skills at public speaking i'm bad at going off script my heart rate goes above 100 literally every time so i sweat and jitter plus i have a bubble voice like a child little yachty I have a 10 minute presentation tomorrow that is worth 50% of my grade. Any tips are appreciated. I hope they sent that today. <laughs> Cause, <laughs> Cause if, if not, we're late, we're late to their advice. So hope you did well. Congra- so, congrats or I'm sorry. <laughs> or you just got fucked, dude. 
Yeah, you just got fucked, dude. Not anal sex. But, um, (laughs) yeah, that is so there are some people with like legitimately crippling stage fright and I was one of them doing stand up, and it still to this day, like I, I get nervous before sets all the time. Uh, um, and it's the only thing that can kind of kill that entirely is preparation. So if you're prepared up the ass, if you know everything and have been faced with every scenario and know which way you would break off, if things, you know, start to deteriorate or if your plan changes path, then that, makes you less nervous that's obvious that's like you know every quarterback in the nfl you hear them like yeah i'm not nervous because i know the entire playbook better than i know anything about my family (laughs) like more more thoroughly than i know my kid's birthday i know (laughs) the sixth option on a drop back you know they just know everything and that's why they're not nervous yeah i'm more nervous about meeting my family than this game you're right yeah or you know but some people if you can't physically stop your body from shaking you just get a beta blocker and if you have like one big presentation every year just take a beta blocker it literally shuts down those nerves you're still experiencing it but you don't have like the physical manifestation of the anxiety oh wait wait i was gonna ask what is a beta blocker i haven't heard of this yeah so it blocks like betas betas (laughs) beta boys like myself but um (laughs) it's great in a frat house for not yeah. wanting to get touched i mean i to be perfectly honest i don't know i just took pharmaceuticals when i've had big sets before and uh it worked it shut down my uh my nervous system i think that's what's happening in there <laughs> <laughs> but uh it, i was nervous i sweat i have heart palpitations and i get physically a little jittery sometimes yeah. and i've taken that before and it as was as if i was talking to my man stefan holy shit oh yeah. It warms my heart that you got the Stefan and not Steven. Mm-hmm. That's great. Mm-hmm. Well, good. All right. I'll also put a link in the show notes for beta blockers. I'll get an affiliate <laughs> thing set up. I mean, so I we'll... think you need a prescription for sure. Ah, okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So US and UK, Canada, DM me and I'll get you a link. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. All right. Well, great advice. We're going to go to the last question. I'm really using my hands a lot for this, but... Mm-hmm. Last question. <clears throat> what should I do when my mother call me during sex? My adoptive mother called me during sex today. I did not answer a phone and continued to ride his dick. What should I do in this situation? That was a female, I assume. Correct, 19-year-old female. So we can't say you just got fucked, dude. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> God damn it. Yeah, you just got <laughs> fucked, lady. <laughs> Uh, lady i don't know if it was anal (laughs) (laughs) yeah yeah question mark anal no i think uh i think you pick up the phone and you show your mom how happy you are (laughs) i mean all of yeah parents entire dream is that their kid is uh is enjoying their life and if she hears you actually coming she's like wow your your father never got me there (laughs) oh my god that's very true i mean I think you're right. The parents, they like to see their kids happy. There's no greater joy right. than a big O, a juicy O. So a big juicy O. And if you didn't get there, it would be your fault since you were on top. <laughs> <laughs> That's obviously not true, but super fun to say because people get real upset. <laughs> That's amazing. I'll post that clip on Instagram. And people will be like, that's not true. That's bullshit. Dude. <laughs> no, please, cut, please cut it off before I explain myself because just no explanation. And if you don't come, it's your fault. <laughs> <laughs> Black. <laughs> that is, that is incredible. All right. Well, um, I think we gave this woman, all the lady, all the advo- voice, all the advice that she needs. So we gave her a voice and advice. So we gave her a voice in her relationship with her mother to show her that she's a grown woman who is now experiencing euphoria. A a strong, independent, orgasmic woman. That's right. That's beautiful. All right. huge. Well, that that is huge. Well, Mike, we've reached the very end of the podcast. So before we hold our tears back and say goodbye, I wanted to say, first off, thank you so much. This has been an absolute blast. Yeah, of course, man. Thanks for having me. This has been fun. 
Absolutely. And I wanted to ask you again, because my listeners, sometimes they don't follow you fucking idiots. Listeners, where can people find you? What have you got going on? What have you got to plug? And, uh, uh, so sorry, at I am, yeah, at I am Mike Cannon, social media, Mike Cannon Comedy on YouTube, Timing on Amazon Prime, that's the movie. And then uh, I got some stuff coming out at the end of this year. I'm not allowed to announce. I'm not that big of a part in it, but it should be a fun thing. And, uh, you know, just got stuff cooking all the time. I think I might be filming a new stand-up thing in December. I don't know what it's going to be yet. But I'm going to film, uh, film a set at a great club, Philly Helium. So if you have any listeners in Philadelphia around December 6th, um, uh, that's going to be a great show. So come out to that. Oh, dude, that's awesome. That's really cool. And then yeah. again, guys, it's going to be in the show notes. There's no fucking excuse. For, this is where I get really stern with my listeners. Yes. There's a lot of love at the beginning. So I'm sorry. It's like you just came over to a friend's house and daddy's really going down on your friend. Yeah. Hey, so and, oh, going down on him. <laughs> <laughs> wrong wording. Wrong wording. Let me backtrack a little bit. How'd Ooh. you know about my worst day ever? <laughs> <laughs> I was reading your Bible, Mike. I was yeah. reading the Bible. <laughs> oh, man. All right. Well, thank you, everybody. We love you, and we'll talk at you next time. Bye. Bye-bye.